The U.S. Navy has been directed to prepare for a war with China by 2027. With all the global instability at the moment, is it too late to deter the CCP from unleashing World War III? Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. And mark your calendars, my friends, on Saturday, October 5th at 8 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. I will be hosting a special live stream celebrating you for helping us reach 2 million subscribers. And you'll want to be there. There will be some big announcements about the future of the show, and Matt Shelley and I will do something we've never done before. Again, that's Saturday, October 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. See you there. And now, on with the show. It's official. The U.S. Navy has been directed to prepare for a war with the Chinese Communist Party by 2027. Two and a half more years until war? I can't tell if that's terrifying or an optimistically long prediction. On September 19th, the U.S. Navy released a new strategic document that details the CCP's preparations to possibly invade Taiwan three years from now, and hints at the importance of countering Beijing's aggressions in the Indo-Pacific. A big part of that is getting 80 percent of the U.S. naval force ready to fight a potential war by 2027. The year 2027 is important because that's the time Chinese leader Xi Jinping wants his military to be ready to take control of Taiwan. The new document is called the Chief of Naval Operations Navigation Plan for America's Warfighting Navy 2024, or Kanopafan for short. It still isn't that short. It's a super long name because it's a super detailed document for a very complex issue. It was authored by Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Lisa Franchetti. It builds off of a previous document from two years ago and is meant to detail areas that the U.S. must improve upon over the next two and a half years if, you know, it doesn't want to get its ass kicked by China. For example, according to the document, China currently has the world's largest shipbuilding capacity, even if its ships aren't as capable or as battle-tested as those of the U.S. It's like that age-old riddle. Would you rather fight a horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? China's navy is like a hundred duck-sized horses. Seems like the easier option, but the sheer quantity can mess you up. But in short, the CCP has engaged in a more than decade-long shipbuilding spree, massively expanding its fleet, drone capabilities, and nuclear arsenal. Mind you, they were way behind the U.S., so this is them playing catch-up. But with an enemy like the CCP, it's never a good idea to get complacent. The document also notes that China's joint forces are coalescing into an integrated warfighting ecosystem specifically designed to defeat ours, backed by a massive industrial base. So it's more like a hundred duck-sized horses with missile launchers. Is it too late to switch to horse-sized duck? China's aggression towards its neighbors is particularly concerning, especially the Philippines, Japan, and Taiwan, as are its joint naval drills with Russia and its support for Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Meanwhile, the U.S. military has found itself in a recruitment crisis. And as of now, maintenance for the surface naval force of cruisers, destroyers, amphibious warships, and literal combat ships is 2,700 days behind. For context, 2,700 days ago, people were still hopeful that the new Star Wars trilogy was going to end on a positive note. That's how long it's been. Enter Project 33. According to the new navigation plan, Project 33 has seven targets to quickly make strategically meaningful military gains. To get the U.S. Navy ready for a potential conflict, Franchetti listed seven goals. They include speeding up ship maintenance, using autonomous weapons more often, and doubling down on recruitment efforts. She noted the U.S. needs to keep an eye on other adversaries, like Russia and Iran, but emphasized that the Navy should focus on Beijing. Other Project 33 goals include creating crucial fleet command centers, restoring piers, docks, and other relevant critical infrastructure, and improving the overall quality of service. Now, you might be wondering why all this upheaval is needed for the world's strongest military power, especially since China is in a steep economic crisis and is already surrounded by enemies, including some pretty strong countries that are being provided with Western weapons and military training. And with the U.S. and its partners conducting regular joint military drills in the region, while restricting semiconductor exports to China, and possibly even preparing small-scale sanctions, shouldn't Beijing already be deterred? Well, theoretically, yes, but this is the CCP we're talking about. 
Because despite all of those domestic troubles and ongoing diplomatic efforts, Xi Jinping has nevertheless ordered the communist regime's military wing to prepare for war and develop the capabilities required to invade Taiwan. And crucially, when it comes to a possible invasion of Taiwan, the People's Liberation Army Navy, or PLAN, has launched its own advanced aircraft carriers and destroyers. Those are all either in Chinese waters or close by, which means supply lines would be easier to maintain, especially with all the aircraft the carriers can hold. Of course, Xi has denied that he plans to take Taiwan by even 2035. But he's not exactly the most reliable source of information. When it comes to poker faces, Xi is right up there with Putin on the world scale. Considering the wars raging in the Middle East and Europe, with little sign of ceasefires, the US military is spread far and wide making it more difficult to react to an attack on Taiwan in a timely manner, let alone deter it. But fortunately, they have plenty of soldiers to go around. Oh, right. In fact, a congressional report back in July warned that the US military lacks the capabilities and capacity required to confidently win such a war or deter China. You know, I'm not Sun Tzu, but maybe it isn't the best war strategy to publicly release a report stating you can't win a war. The same report suggested that the CCP will take advantage of this by pushing boundaries in the South China Sea and Taiwan Strait. Implementing all of Franchetti's goals and reforms would be a daunting task, but the US does have some unique advantages. That includes combat experience, something the CCP lacks. Since its inception, it's easier to find times the US wasn't at war. And like Xi Jinping, the US has been learning a lot from the war in Ukraine, as well as the ones in the Middle East. Franchetti said that studying Ukraine's combination of missiles, robotic surface vessels, and agile digital capabilities in the fight against Moscow's Black Sea Fleet has allowed Washington to learn a great deal about the future of war at sea, which is noteworthy considering that Ukraine has no navy, and until now has had very little battle experience, but it's still managing to keep Russia on the ropes in the Black Sea. This is not just going to help the US Navy plan on how to improve its own methods of warfare, but also how to counter an enemy that could use cheaper swarms of drones or other weapons to make up for its lack of resources or experience. In terms of learning experiences for the US Navy, there's also the naval mission in the Red Sea, which has been engaged in a tit-for-tat campaign against the Iran-backed Houthis of Yemen. Regarding that, Franchetti told the Associated Press that she thinks probably no one is learning more than the Navy, because really, this is the first time we've been in a weapons engagement zone for this sustained period. Maybe that's why the Pentagon is even planning a hellscape scenario of drone swarms to help defend Taipei should the CCP attack. On top of the recent experience in waging these kinds of campaigns, Franchetti's plan calls on the Navy to work more closely with Congress to secure critical supply chains and lays out a vision in which all fleet headquarters in the service will field their own maritime operations centers. That would ensure that the Navy maintains superiority in command and control, military intelligence, and maneuvering, even with the PLAN being numerically superior and on home grounds. Or, well, home waters. In other words, it doesn't matter how many duck-sized horses they have, even with missile launchers. So far, things are looking good in some ways. The Navy is meeting active duty recruitment goals for the first time in two straight years. They're running the most effective Navy recruitment campaign since that Village People song. And the U.S. has friends who are more than willing to help out. China currently has more warships in the U.S. To counter that, Washington has reached out to a friend to boost its declining shipbuilding capacity, South Korea. One of the country's biggest builders offered a $100 million bid to buy Philly Shipyard in Philadelphia. This comes months after the U.S. Navy Secretary visited South Korea to court investment in U.S. shipbuilding. The deal is pending approval. And even in the U.S., Franchetti isn't alone in calling for preparations to face China. The U.S. Air Force is also planning its own reforms to disperse several bases in the Indo-Pacific into smaller centers further away from Chinese ballistic missiles. But that plan would also call for increased cyber capabilities, missile defense systems, and smaller teams of multi-capable airmen who can perform several roles in operations. There are still several questions as to what degree these suggestions or reforms can and will be implemented, and if it'll all be done in time to deter Xi from attacking Taiwan in 2035, wink wink, nudge nudge. The US Navy will have to work more with Congress to increase the budget for this kind of plan, 
One naval analyst said that while he likes a lot of the clear short-term goals for the service, there needs to be a more detailed plan on how to increase the number of ships to 381, which requires a bigger budget. And I know all about how hard it is to get things done on a shoestring budget. China Uncensored is only possible thanks to the support of viewers like you on the crowdfunding website patreon.com slash China Uncensored. And as a thank you, I'll respond to one of your questions or comments at the end of these episodes. Today's comes from Mervin. A Chinese invasion of Taiwan would devastate companies like Valve that depend on Taiwanese semiconductors, software engineers, and game developers such as Game Science, which use Taiwanese semiconductors and Unreal Engine, whose root is Tencent to make video games. You know, that's a really good point, Mervin. Unlike the invasion of Ukraine, which, other than taking up a lot of U.S. resources, hasn't really affected Americans much. But a Chinese invasion of Taiwan would be totally different. We would feel it. Not even including the whole aspect of American troops getting involved. As you mentioned, Mervyn, Taiwan's semiconductor industry is vitally important for all kinds of things. There would be all kinds of ripple effects of a Chinese invasion of Taiwan that we can't even really predict, which is why it's so important to deter China from invading in the first place. Thanks for your support and your passion, Mervyn. And thank you for watching. Before YouTube sends you off to some random video, here's one that I made and I really recommend it. Much better use of your time than whatever YouTube's algorithm thinks you should watch. And hit that orange button to join me on Patreon. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.